we're in the middle of Fraser Island in the middle of nowhere and we're going to try and uh, tow a vehicle out of you, so wish us luck. I've been running in the east, looking for sunset, digging deep since nine and nine. So we're camped, we're camped just here in zone five near the Mahino wreck. So we're going to go up past the wreck and take a left onto Warali Road, cut right across the island and have a bit of an explore on the west coast. And then, uh, yeah, then we're just going to punch up the, we might have a look at Winnie Creek and a couple of the other things on the west coast and then we'll come back a different way. We'll probably come a Winnie Road back back across and uh, yeah, maybe check out Lake Alum and maybe one or two of the other lakes on the way back. And then uh, it'll be nice and low tide when we get back to check out the Mahino Wreck itself. It's a falling tide, there's a little bit of beach to drive up, but we won't be on the beach for long and we'll be cutting across the inland tracks at over and hopefully have a good day on the other side. Hopefully the weather's gonna play ball, it's cloudy again, but you know, to be honest, we're actually expecting worse weather. The forecast look worse than, uh, than the weather we've had so far, so. Fingers crossed. Yesterday was a cracking day at, at uh, Mackenzie. Glad we went to Lake Mackenzie yesterday. But uh, yeah, we'll see what we'll do with whatever we get. Not much solar coming in either. So anyway, here's what it is. Gas cooking at the moment. Let's, uh, let's go see what we can find. So we were just looking for the turn off um, to Worley Road and uh, we, we were going slowly and uh, as we were looking we sort of missed a massive bump in the sand and just got a little bit airborne as we came around the corner. Yeah, it just shows you how, you know, how carefully you got to watch. Yeah, the beach conditions can change quickly. Harrison got a bit of a fright, the boys are alright, we're all okay, but uh, yeah, not something you want to do often. This is epic, like what a cool spot how quickly that just changed from the open woodland into the rainforest, unreal. What did it do? Did it just cut out by itself? If you died by itself. No, don't try staying with Just neutral, off the brake, handbrake off, and just steer. Yeah. 
Yeah, what do we check? Air box first. Right, so, oh yeah, oh yeah. Try the uh, arm. Yeah, that's proper work. Well, we've had a bit of a whoopsie. So that uh, water crossing we came through was pretty deep. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, it was a that was a deep a bit of water. Now, obviously, we've got the snorkel on the Ranger and got through okay. Probably should have stopped and, and checked, obviously, in hindsight. And uh, the Amarok sucked up a bit of water. We don't really have the tools here with us to, to go and start pulling cylinders apart and things like that. The Amarok need, it, um, needs a specialist tool to get the injectors out. So... Rather than trying to fix it here and crank it over and get it going and potentially doing more damage, we've decided we're just going to flat tow it out of here. So we're just working out at the moment how to turn it around on the track, get it spun around. We've got two other vehicles here. We'll be towing them nice and slowly. They're going to have pretty strong arm steering. <laughs> this is going to be no power steering without it running and they'll have limited braking. So what we're probably going to do is put them in between the two vehicles. I'll tow them. Um, Steve in the BT-50 will stick behind them with another strap connected uh, just in case they, coming down some of the steep hills, they um, they don't have enough braking and he can he can pull them up, obviously. So we'll be snaking out of here nice and slowly, getting back to the eastern beach. So, yeah, look, we're, I'm not sure 100% how far in we are. We're a few k's in, so it's going to be probably a couple of hours to get out of here. Uh, get back to camp and then just reassess from there whether we can get some mechanical help on the island or whether we need to get the vehicle towed off the island. So very sad, um, certainly not how we wanted the day to go. Um, a lot of lessons here to learn, obviously, that you know, we could have done things very differently in hindsight. Um, even before I went through, I probably could have walked it or should have walked it, uh, but we did just pass a convoy of vehicles coming the other way that had just driven through it and said it was deep, but it's doable. Uh, and I obviously got through okay with the snorkel. It's just, um, yeah, the vehicles without a snorkel, it's um, yeah, a bit of a different story. So in hindsight, yeah, could have done things differently, but here we are, we're gonna deal with it. and. Um, yeah, we'll live and learn. So hopefully someone out there can learn from our mistakes. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how uh, how much damage there is and, and what it involves, and we'll keep you guys updated on that. Right, yeah, so we're flat tailing the Amarok out of here. Um, uh, high range or low range, mate? What are you in? I'm going low range first just to crawl along and see how everything goes and then we'll reassess. Pete, you just stay neutral, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I'm just pointing to you. <laughs> Alright, let's see. There we go. We're just going to keep the Amarok hook, um, hooked to the BT50 at the back, so if we do get to a downhill. Um, yeah, that we can pull it up because the Amarox brakes may not operate very well when the engine's not running.
We'll make a plan from here what we're going to do with this vehicle and how we're going to get it sorted. Okay. Keep you posted. Well, <laughs> thought we better give you guys a little bit of an update. Um, it's the next morning. Uh, we got the car out. We got Mel and Pete's Amarok back to camp. We flat towed it all the way out. Uh, it wasn't too bad, actually. It, it, yeah, it was without incident. Uh, you were amazing. We did well. You we did can well. Drive. Yeah. So yeah. it did take its toll on our um, kinetic rope, unfortunately. Um, Worth it, it though to get Pete out. Yeah, just a lot of chafe um, on the rope itself, and especially at the eye where we had it on an equaliser strap to the front of the Amarok. Uh, it was obviously doing a lot of work and a lot of twisty track getting out, um, sliding back and forth on that. It's chafed it pretty severely. So that's a bit disappointing, but. It's not really what that strap's designed for either. It's not really a tow rope. It is. It is a, just a recovery strap. This morning, we uh, we've packed up camp. Um, we're just about getting ready to leave. We've been out to Eli Creek this morning. Had a really good swim down there. The weather was turned it up for us this morning. It was, it was beautiful. Well, this is Eli Creek. It's a little bit special, isn't it? It's like this beautiful, warm, knee-deep water. It's crystal clear, fresh water, mangroves, grass, perfect for the kids. The sun is just like finally showing its head for our last day here on Fraser and yeah I'm pretty excited to just be here and uh, chill out by the beach with the kids for a little bit before we uh, pack up and get this caravan off Fraser Island again so yeah we're just gonna hang out here and chill and um, yeah spend some time with our friends and family before they head off on their own little adventures it's a real I can see why it's a popular spot to hang out on Fraser it's just very chill very calm like it's your nice down day activity. Come with me and I'll show you around. So the other thing that's here is there's a boardwalk uh, that you walk up and you take your floats, you jump in at one end and you float down to the ocean. So that's what it's pretty popular for here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna give that a crack. So let's see how it goes.
Harrison. Can you see Charlie? Nice little float down there with the kids and um, yeah, and just chilling out there for a couple of hours because the tow truck is coming at, uh, at 1 p.m. So we're just uh, kicking here now, just waiting for the tow truck to arrive. Pretty sad to see, it's um, yeah. yeah. It's their, you know, they've spent a lot of time and energy getting that camper and um, car up to scratch to come camping with us and stuff. So it's obviously very disappointing for them and they're meant to be spending the next two weeks with us. So we're just hoping that that still all goes to plan and that their vehicle just needs a little quick, you know, magic fingers at the mechanics and it's yeah. all good. <laughs> yeah, look, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, look, it doesn't look good, but fingers crossed the best case scenario is it hasn't done any terminal damage and the mechanics can flush the water out of the engine um, and, and get it all cleaned out and it, and it runs. Um, would obviously be the perfect scenario from here. Yeah, we'll see We'll see what happens. We'll let you guys know when we find out the result. But yeah, it is disappointing because Mel and Pete were going to be travelling with us for another couple of weeks. That's now sort of up in the air. We'll see how that goes. We've got to keep going north. When the tilt tray arrives, we'll... Uh, yeah, show, you how show the hammer up, loading up, and there's back down the beach and on the barge. Yeah, it's been amazing, apart from Mel and Pete's vehicle. Yeah, like when we came here, I was convinced that it was going to be us that was going to be needing recovery. I was convinced yeah. we were going to get bogged with the van on. Uh, fingers crossed, we got here without an incident. Uh, big drive out today. We'll we've see. We've still got to get out, though. Yeah, we've still got to get out. <laughs> and the sand is drying out. It is getting a bit softer than when we arrived a few days ago. So. Look, we'll see how we go. Fingers crossed. We are following a recovery we truck don't. out on the plus side. So, yeah, anyway. And we, and we do well. still have um, Steve and Tara here with their BT50 without a trailer on. So, um, that'll be our recovery vehicle if we need it. Definitely have to come back. There are so many things here that are left untouched by us that, yeah. 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 We originally had 10 days planned. I don't know if we talked about this yet. We originally had 10 days planned on the island with Mel and Pete. And then we got a, f a phone call to say, do we want to be on a TV show called What's Up Down Under? And we were like, we should probably take that offer. But we're like, oh, you know, like ditching our friends. That's that's not us. Like we don't we don't ditch our friends. So we actually managed to get Mel and Pete on the show as well. <laughs> yeah, well, they weren't <laughs> actually going to be on the show, but they were going to come along as crew yeah, and, and come yeah, along as crew. be behind the scenes. And yeah. Um, yeah, getting a lot of the perks that we're going to get out of that as well. So um, it'll be devastating if they don't have a vehicle to be able to make it to get up to us. What an adventure Fraser <laughs> Island was. So yeah, it was, um, well, obviously a lot happened. It was a bit sad to cut that one short, but definitely left some stuff there uncovered that we've got to get back to. Uh, update, we got off the island. <laughs> off the island without incident. No incident. I got to drive in the tow truck with the towie and he had some cracking stories. Like I just asked him about all the best recoveries off Fraser Island. Um, the longest one, took three days and cost over $30,000 to get a vehicle off the island. It was a Ram 2500 that was only a few weeks old and the insurance company wouldn't um, pay out unless the vehicle was actually recovered. And it was 10 metres uh, underneath the ocean. So it took three days, about $30,000. That was a pretty funny story, that one. I liked that. Yeah, you had plenty of stories. Oh man, he wasn't short of a story or two. So with the Amarok got towed off the island, obviously we made it off without incident. We didn't get bogged, thankfully, um, even though we're pretty good at that. And Ten drive, Simon. Yeah, we. it took a bit. We had to punch it to get off, off the uh, beach at Inskip Point there, but we made it fine. Um, look, update on the Amarok. Unfortunately, as some of you may have guessed, uh, the damage to the engine was terminal, basically. So uh, it uh, killed the engine and uh, just, yeah, due to the age of the vehicle and everything, the insurance company wrote it off. So the Amarok is no more, unfortunately. But on the plus side, uh, we were able to, well, Pete 
got furious on Google and ringing around and got his hands on a on a hire vehicle. So they were able to continue on and enjoy uh, a couple of weeks traveling with us as they'd originally planned, which was awesome. That was so good. It was a lot of organizing and logistics. And Pete and Mel just did so well. They're like, they're machines when it comes to organization. I think they logistics. ended up with three different hire vehicles <laughs> over the two weeks just because of availability and things like that. Um, so they did outstandingly well. Uh, so that, that was a good silver lining to that. Obviously, a lot of lessons learned on Fraser. Uh, it was an awesome adventure taking the caravan over there. I'm really glad we pushed ourselves to do that. As we said, we're definitely going to go back at some stage and do a bit more exploring of the island. We obviously didn't get to do as much as we were hoping for. There was a lot of logistics and planning involved in the Fraser Island trip. If you wanted to go to Fraser Island, if, if your mates were planning a trip to Fraser Island, what would you tell them? Yeah, look, I think if you're towing, I think traveling in convoy is a really good idea. Uh, it, it especially calms the nerves a lot just knowing you've got help if you need it. Recovery gear, make sure you've got plenty of that, obviously. Recovery tracks, max tracks, treads, whatever you want to take, are really, really useful in sand. I mean, if you've seen us travel in our travels, we've used them a lot. Um, recovery gear, for sure. Um, tire pressures is crucial. Uh, understanding your setup, if it's the first time you've traveled on sand, you're going to have a little bit of, uh, yeah, look, learning, I guess, to figure out what pressures are for you. But generally, I would say lower than you think, um, especially to get on of, on uh, inskip point and onto the barge. Uh, you may be able to put them up again, depending on what the conditions are like. We were lucky, as we said in the video, we had some wet sand conditions, which obviously makes driving a lot easier. If it's, if it's dry sand, um, you just got to assess based. Conditions change rapidly all over the country, but particularly on beaches. Um, so don't take our experience as being what it's going to be like for you. You've really just got to take as it comes when you get there and make your own assessment and decide if, if it's something you want to do. There is a chance, as you saw in our video, uh, of, of losing a vehicle and things like that. I mean, granted, that was on one of the inland tracks, but, you know, beach conditions can be, can be treacherous. So don't be complacent, but don't be scared off it either. You know, take precautions and, uh, yeah, and, and it's certainly doable. Uh, but yeah, number one advice is recovery gear, and if you can travel in convoy, uh, particularly with vehicles that aren't towing, that can that can really help you out. So I think they're the number one things. But just get over there and enjoy it. Fraser's an incredible place, so much to explore. As we said, way more than what we were able to uncover in this trip. But we will be back. Absolutely. Some things that we didn't show you before we went to Fraser, we did another van um, clear out, basically thinking about our weights. We wanted to be as light as possible for towing on the sand on Fraser Island, particularly the Inskip Point part where there's a whole Facebook page dedicated to the I got bogged on Inskip Point. Yep. So um, we only went over with one water tank because... Eli Creek is a freshwater creek, so our plan was one water tank for drinking water and we would use the Eli Creek water for washing sand, you know, all the other things that are not drinking water. So thinking about what you really need and what you don't, and we did leave a little bit of our gear that was unnecessary at a mate's place in Brisbane. So yeah. some of our heavier gear, we just we just left it there, thought we, we do not need this for this trip. Like you'll notice the swags aren't on, things like that. It was all left behind, and we'll pick that up later. So yeah, it was all to cut down weight, and and I think the other thing with water is as well. I mean, you, you're swimming in Eli Creek, you're swimming in Lake Mackenzie. So if you're like us, if we're swimming a fair bit, we don't necessarily have as many showers, so you're not using as much water there. You can also use seawater for your dishes and things like that. So there's there's all there's obviously you're on an island, there's mm. water available. So yeah, you can really conserve that water and save carrying over a, an unnecessary amount of water. But and I would say, personally, as a passenger. The hardest part about towing was those little inland track bits. Yeah. What are those? Yeah, the rocks, those what little. What were they called? The little diversion tracks around the rocks. It depends on what tide you hit. We were a little bit later than we were planning on being for the tide there. You really want to be just a little bit before low or right at dead low if you can to get around those rocks on the beach. But I wasn't going to risk it going around the rocks with the van on with the tide coming in. So. Glad we went, went that way, but yeah, again, that helps if you got a convoy as well. We were able to send um, the guys that weren't towing ahead of us, Steve and Tara, to check the track for us, and they were able to radio back and let us know when the track was clear. So mm. that helped out as well. You wouldn't want to have to try and reverse down there because there are tour buses and things like that that use those tracks as well. So something to be mindful of. All the different tour operators, the tow trucks and the buses, use different UHF channels. So there's no universal UHF channel which on Fraser tricky. Island, which makes it a bit tricky. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully in time there'll be some sort of uniformity about that and make it a bit easier, but... 
Yeah, it is I, what it is. I, I was surprised there wasn't a call up channel for those inland tracks, just a sign with a with the mm. UHF channel just to call up and communicate with other travellers. But it is what it is. There are a few little spots where you could sneak past each other if you did come across oncoming traffic, but there's also a few spots where it'd be very difficult. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is if you're not towing, I think the inland campgrounds would be a much better option than the Mahino Rec campground because it's just a lot more central to a lot of the things that you want to see. When we yeah, were camped it, at Mahino Rare... It depends what you're into. Some people yeah. love camping on the beach. Yeah. And the downside of the inland is you wouldn't get any solar. It's dense jungle. So oh, true. we wouldn't be able to stay for very long without solar, you know, four or five days, and well, maybe even less than that, and we'd be we'd be having to move. So the advantage to being out on the beach is you've got plenty of solar. So The other thing I was a little bit nervous about, the dingoes on Fraser Island with the kids prior to... Um, traveling there because obviously you hear about them and you just land predators with little kids like I just it doesn't sit well with me you do have to really watch them there's they're everywhere there you wouldn't I wouldn't leave my kids where I couldn't see them and especially at dawn dusk there's a couple used of times. To humans too they're not yeah. too scared of humans they'll come right, right through your campsite and everything yeah. so so, yeah, so do keep a really close eye on your kids uh, just be safe so from Fraser Island, we got off the island and then two days it took us. We had to get to Airlie Beach to start filming with What's Up Down Under. Thankfully, Mel and Pete were able to join us for that as well. If you've seen that, those episodes, you might have seen them on there. If you haven't seen our What's Up Down Under uh, epic trip that we did, the trip of a lifetime, uh, it's on 10 Play. You can go and watch those catch-up episodes on there. But basically to fill you in, we travelled from Airlie Beach to Cairns with a TV crew and we just did a heap of activities. There was... Oh, diving, bungee jumping, Crazy white stuff. water rafting. It was a lot of fun. We had a great time, but it was full on. Like filming for TV is so different to filming for YouTube. YouTube, you just turn the camera on, go, say what you want to say, show what you want to show. TV is it's a whole new ball game. Very different. So it was really hard for us to film anything for ourselves while we were there. We were flat stick. Yeah, we did do one behind the scenes episode. If you want to catch up that on, if that interests you, that's on YouTube on our channel. Go and have a look at that. Uh, but yeah, for you guys, next Sunday we are going to be exploring around Cairns, which is where we finished up filming for the TV show. So really excited to show you a bit of Far North Queensland. We've got a few episodes coming up of Cairns and surrounds. We get up to Cape Trib. Uh, I'm not sure Atherton if that'll make Atherton Tablelands. A lot of waterfalls. It, awesome, awesome time exploring around up there. So that's what's coming up for you guys. Leave us a comment. Let us know. Would you take your caravan over to Fraser? Are we mad? Who knows? Uh, I'd love to hear if anyone else has taken a full size caravan over there. I know we're not the only ones to have done it. So tell us your stories. How did you go? Did you get stuck? Didn't you? If you've got a caravan, would you take it to Fraser Island? We recommend you do it. There's obviously a lot of things you need to take things into consideration. A lot of precautions, but. Definitely awesome to be able to sit on the beach there and camp on a sand island with a caravan. It's something really, really special. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button. It really does help us out. If you're new here or if you're not subscribed for some bizarre reason, hit that subscribe button. It is fast and free and it really does help us out. And as always, we are donating 10% of our revenue to charity. So thanks to everyone who supports so us in this channel. So good to be able to give back a little bit. We focus on rural communities and children's charities for those donations. So really appreciate your support on that. If you want a little bit more of us, you can check us out on Patreon as well. Patreon, yeah, we, yeah, we do live chats with Patreons and catch-ups and yeah, all sorts of awesome perks in there. And any questions, Patreons, like we would just go above and beyond for you guys. Anything you want to know, shoot us a message. There's yeah. links to all that and more in the description below as well as at the end of this video. Thanks guys, appreciate you watching. We'll see you next week up in Cairns. Looking forward to that. Until then though, we'll see you next Sunday. See you Sunday guys. Cheers. Where do you think I just found that? Um, I don't know. Where have you been putting your banana skins? In the car? Yes. In the back seat? In the seat pocket? Yes. Do you see why that's maybe not a good idea? Because mm -hmm. they're pretty yucky when I just found that. Can we stop doing that please? Sure. Thanks mate. <laughs> Probably have enough fuel now to get off the island. I'm not going to lie, I'd already thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> That screen. I'm not going to look, look at the screen, I promise, promise, I promise, I'm going to look straight in the lens. <laughs> no, you mean look at the lens. <laughs>